All right, folks, so in this video, we're gonna take a look at this multimeter from Venlab. It is the VM-600A, and it is a 6,000 count multimeter. I think you can see that right there. True RMS, which is fantastic, and it can measure amperage or current up to 20 amps, which is pretty good. This thing's pretty beefy in the hand, and uh, I like the way that it feels. I like a large, big multimeter like this on my desk because it's easy to use and it's easy to read. Now, one thing I wanted to say before we get started, I was contacted by the fine folks at VenLab, and they asked if I would do this review. Of course, I said yes, because I like doing reviews, and I like multimeters. So they sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. Now, if you're the type of person who gets triggered by sponsored videos, it's probably best you go watch some cat videos. All right, so let's see what's in the box. Uh, it's a nice box, if that means anything, and there's a little bit of information on it, but uh, not enough to be meaningful. So let's go ahead and pop this baby open and see what we have. Here's the multimeter itself, and uh, this thing is beefy. Let's see if I can figure out how to open this bag. There we go, let me just put that right here for now. Looks like we have a thermocouple, which is always handy. And then we have some probes, and uh, let's go ahead and get this open real quick. And these look like your run-of-the-mill PVC probes that you typically get with these types of multimeters. They have, uh, looks like, protective tips here, which is nice so you don't poke yourself. And uh, they look like traditional banana plug adapters. Let's take a look at these real quick and see if they have any writing on them. So, it looks like it says 1,000 volts max, 20 amps, which is fantastic. I love when they send these replacement fuses, and it uh, looks like we have 0.6 amps at 250 volts. And it comes with batteries. I like when they send us extra batteries. And an instruction manual. We'll take a look at this and uh, see how well it is. All right, let's get some of this off the table. Now, before we do anything crazy, let's go ahead and take care of this piece of plastic on here. And everybody loves that for some reason. All right, let me uh, figure out how we're going to install these batteries. All right, well, the first thing we need to do is we need to open up the batteries. We just do that real quick and uh, we get them out. These are these are triple A batteries. And I'm wondering if it's going to take all four. It probably will. Underneath the bale, and this is a pretty nice bale, you can actuate the controls without, uh, without it sliding around too much. We have a screw. So let's go ahead and get that screw out. Look at that. We have a brass metal insert, which is fantastic. I like when they do that. And it looks like it's going to take all four batteries. All right, let's take a quick look at the meter. On the back of it, you have a hook here that you can put a nail or something like that on the wall and hang it. And it also has these magnets on here. And uh, they're pretty good magnets. These are handy if you're working like in a car or something like that and you need to put this on something metallic and you don't want it to slide around. So it's actually pretty handy. It has these keepers for your probes. Um, it has a hard rubber uh, casing around the outside of it. And that's good for drop protection, although we do have the control knob sticks out a little bit. So if you drop it face down, you could risk some damage there. But um, these hard plastic casing also work as blast protection in the event that you have a lot of energy go through this and uh, it explodes on you. Let's go ahead and turn it on. And that has a nice big bright display. There you go, you can turn on a light, which is so bright it washes it out, but uh, it looks really good to the eye. We'll go through all these functions in a little bit. And then down here you have your various ports, uh, a separate one for milliamps, you don't always see that. Then you have one for amps, then you have your common, and then you have voltage, ohms, frequency, and temperature. And it has some reminders down here about your different cat ratings for each one of those, which is pretty nice. Up at the top, we have a light. Let's see if we can turn that on. Oh, I got to turn the meter on. 
So I guess I turn that on that way, and and that turns on. Nope, it doesn't. Looks like a long press turns the flashlight on, and that looks like a pretty decent flashlight. Um, that's handy if you're working in a dark area, obviously. And then a single press will turn that off. And then up here you would have your non-contact voltage uh, detector. All right, well, let's uh, get these probes hooked up and get out our some of our testing devices and do some testing. All right, let's get this uh, meter tested. So when we take a look at the meter, the first setting that we have here is a millivolts setting. When we use this, we want to plug our hot, our red, our positive into this particular port where you have vo volts, ohms, hertz, and temperature. And then we plug the black into the common. And what I did for this is I connected this uh, multimeter up to my Unity power supply. So let me just go ahead and roll an image in real quick. And here you can see the Venlab is set for the, the millivolts reading. It's connected up. And what we're doing is, is that we are uh, pumping out 100 uh, millivolts and you can see that it is accurate there so let me go ahead and pull up the next one in the list and you can see that now at 200 uh, millivolts you can see the, ac the accuracy of the Venlab and then what we have here is we'd made a jump to 400 and it says 3997 which is within spec and then we did one more and let me go ahead and pull that up and at 600 millivolts, we have 5991, which is in spec. Okay, now we're going to take a look at actual voltage on the multimeter, and we use the same ports. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to just check the voltage. So what we have is the multimeter is set to voltage here, and we have DC selected on our function button. And we're going to use this tool, which is a calibration standard called a DMM Check Plus. And it's for measuring the accuracy of multimeters. So I'll have a link to this below uh, for a video that I made on that. So anyhow, let's go ahead and test. And we are set for DC. And I just go ahead and I touch my probes. And we get 49999. And this is uh, tested at 5 volts. So that is within spec. Let me go ahead, hit the function button, switch to AC. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to switch that to AC. We're going to come back over here and we're going to test again. And here we go. We are at 4955. And this calibration standard has been tested to 4999 on AC voltage. So that is within standard or specification. Okay, next we're going to move up to testing... Um, ohms, continuity, and diodes. So here we go. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to find our resistance standards, which are right here. The first one is at, it looks like 100 ohms of resistance. So let's just go ahead and test that. And we are at 100.3. The next one is for one kilo ohm. And we are right on at one kilo ohm. The next is 10 kilo ohms. And that would be with inspect. And now 100 kilo ohms. And there we are spot on. Okay, to test continuity, what we're going to do is we're going to hit the function button. And now we're set for continuity testing. And you can see a little speaker comes up down here. And that gives us an audible alert. And then you can see there's also a light that lets us know that we have continuity. So continuity is when you measure an electrical connection between two points. So for this, we're, we're just gonna use, this is just a little circuit that I built uh, a while back using a um, test board for nano VNA. And let's go ahead and test the continuity across the shield through this circuit. And then you can see we have continuity. And then let's go ahead and test the center conductor. And once again, we have continuity. So that worked. Now I got to grab some diodes so we can do the diode test. So what we have here is a diode and this thing is very, very small. It's a shocky diode and I have a whole pack of them right here. So what a diode does is it restricts the amount of current that flows through a particular device or through the diode. And so, 
Okay, hitting the function button, I now get a diode icon on the multimeter. And then I go ahead and, and I connect this. And what it's doing is it's forwarding 0.295 volts, which is what we would expect. If I flip the diode backwards and I do the same test, we should not get anything, and we don't. All right, so the next thing we want to test here is capacitance. So let me go grab a capacitor, and then we can go ahead and perform that test. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch the multimeter to capacitance, and this is our capacitance test. And what we have here is our DMM check plus, and it has a series of capacitance readings here. The first one we're going to test is for one microfarad. So let's go ahead and do that. And we have one microfarad. The next one is for 0.1 microfarad. And this is showing us 100 nanofarads, which is correct. 0.01 microfarads and that gives us 10 nanofarads and then 0.001 microfarads and that gives us one nanofarad and we're good we passed the capacitance test the next test is going to be measuring frequency and here you can see a hertz designation i'm actually going to grab another multimeter that produces uh, a frequency and we're going to use that to test Okay, so what we have here is the Anang AN8008, which is a really nice smaller um, pocket multimeter. And you can see that it is producing 50 hertz, and that's what you see over here on this device. Let's go ahead and turn that up to 100, 200, 300, and we're now 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, and 1,000. And this is showing us um, kilocycles now. So this is one, this is, this is one uh, kilohertz. You can see that up here at the top, which is 1,000 hertz. And it passed that test. The next thing that we're going to take a look at here is... Um, microamps and we're actually not going to take a look at that because i don't believe i have a way to test it but we are going to switch down to milliamps which we do have a way to test and when we do milliamp testing what we need to do is we need to disconnect from here and then we want to go over to this particular port now what i'm going to do is i'm going to roll in a series of pictures real quick uh, because i had this connected up to my unity power supply so let's take a look so here you can see we have the power supply set for 0.076 amps, uh, which would be 76 milliamps, and the meter is reading at its 77.5. So let me go ahead and show you at 200 milliamps, which is right here, and uh, we are good there, reading at 201, which is within spec. And here is another screenshot, and this would be at uh, 38 Point, I'm sorry, 38.3. And then you can see that is correct on the Venn Labs as well. So it's within spec and it's measuring reasonably accurate for very low uh, amount of current, which is great. All right, the next thing we're going to take a look at is non contact voltage. So let me get that set up. Okay, so here you can see the meter is set for NCV or non contact voltage. Mm -hmm. Our non contact voltage reader is this bump on the top or this probe on the top and then you can see when you get near a source of AC current you should get a non-contact voltage reading now one of the things I want to say about non-contact voltage is is that it is an indicator not an absolute so you just because it says there's no non-contact voltage doesn't mean it doesn't exist you can see at a distance it's not giving us any reading you have to get pretty close to it so one of the things I would always caution folks is, is that don't trust this to on any multimeter to ever be an absolute value. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the temperature control here. Okay, so we have the multimeter set for temperature, and you can switch, like I showed, back and forth between Celsius and Fahrenheit. And so right now it's saying it's 68, 69 degrees through the temperature control of the thermocouple. And so what I can also do here is I can hold this between my fingers and then you can start to see the temperature rising. Let's do this, put it in the middle of my hand. 
and it's going up. All right, well, that's going to be our test of the thermocouple. So here's the Amazon link that I'll have posted below, and you can take a look at it. Actually, right now, the Venn Lab is on sale for $25.49. Uh, that might not be the case when you watch this video. I think it typically retails for $29.99. And uh, for that price, you get a pretty heck of a good multimeter. Um, I'm not going to go through this. You can go ahead and pull it up, but you can see all the different uh, specifications and information on it and stuff along those lines. With that said, what I want to say now is thanks to VenLab for sending this multimeter to me for my consideration. Thanks to everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks again.